Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. And we talked a lot about, hey, 4th of July weekend. That's when you can start to formulate your idea of what this recruiting class is going to turn into for K-State. As we know, this week got off to a good start for K-State when they landed Lincoln Cure, the five-star from Goodland. But they weren't going to be done, and that continues now because we have some of our first 4th of July weekend fireworks. Montario Elston is now a member of K-State's football class in 25 and this is significant because it's the first running back of the class for the Wildcats and uh somebody that I mean just kind of fits to the mold of K-State running backs recently now where obviously Deuce Vaughn and then you added Dylan Edwards through the transfer portal and here comes Montario Elston a, a 5'8 170 guy but a top 10 player in the state of Arkansas had that in-state Arkansas offer as well as numerous other Power 5 schools. I'll rattle them off right now since they're not on the screen for you, but just if anybody else was curious, like had a Missouri offer, Georgia Tech was in there. So there were other Power 5 schools in like SEC caliber Power 5 schools regionally that wanted him, and uh, Montario Elston ends up choosing K-State. What, what went into that decision for him? Yeah, I think this was kind of a long time coming for K-State and Montero Wilson. I think that they were both each other's number ones for a while. Like, I, I think that you kind of saw that when he visited in the fall and K-State offered him uh, just before he visited in the fall. And he really raved about that visit. And then again, he came back in January. And this was even after he had an Arkansas offer and Arkansas uh, hosted him on, on an unofficial visit at that point. And kind of at that point, you still thought that Casey was still pretty out in front. I know that the Arkansas coaching situation probably isn't the most ideal for 2025 prospects at this point, uh, just with Sam Pittman's situation. But I, I think that even without that, that Casey was kind of like a, the Lincoln Cure situation, where I think Casey was out in front for a long time, and it was really hard for anybody to catch up. And the only team that probably would have been able to catch up was Arkansas. And I think that's why you saw him only take the two official visits to Arkansas and K-State. Because those two teams were by far his top two. And I still think that K-State was still so far out in front. And I think that part of that has to do with the relationship that he had with running backs coach Brian Anderson. And then you also, like you rattled off Deuce Vaughn, Dylan Edwards. I mean, you can go back even further. John Hubert, Darren Sproles. I think that those running backs having a lot of success at K-State also played a big factor into Elston's decision. Yeah, you can you can kind of just essentially prove that, hey, it, no matter the, the year, the era, the style, small running backs have been able to thrive at K-State, and certainly that would be what Montario Elston hopes works out for him. Now, we talk about some of those guys. In terms of what Montario Elston is as a football player and what you can see, uh, what is K-State getting with him? K-State's getting a speed merchant. Like, he has speed for days, and you see that right away with this first play where he gets the ball, makes one cut, and that's game over. Uh, he's kind of like the Davon Rice, Dylan Edwards, Deuce Vaughn kind of type where one play is really all you need, and he can be a home run hitter. And I think that we're kind of seeing that that's kind of been the trend for K-State on offense recently where – they want to maximize the guys that they have that can score on one play. And we saw that last year with Davon Rice and then adding Dylan Edwards in the transfer portal because I think that's something that K-State was really missing last season uh, as a team. And I think that they're kind of compounding that by adding some big-time playmakers in the last few classes uh, because Elston, literally, like, he touches the ball and you are probably holding your breath if you're the opposing defense. And kind of like Davon Rice, uh, also, the strange thing about Monterey Wilson is that he isn't even the starting running back on his own high school team. <laughs> so that, that just kind of shows how loaded his high school is because he is one of the best prospects in the state of Arkansas and is the backup running back for his own high school. Yeah, so I was going to I was gonna have you, you break that down a little bit because – well, this is, and you mentioned Davon Rice, same type of deal where Davon Rice played at Bishop Gorman last year and he was not their number one running back. And that's why he was kind of this diamond in the rough find for K State and got him to flip from Hawaii. Uh, Montario Elston is not the only running back that's going to play power for football. Uh, 
at, uh, I believe it's Parkview Magnet down in Little Rock. Yeah, he is not the only one. I believe uh, Cameron Settles is the starting running back, and he has offers from just about everyone. So I think that that's kind of what you see with Monterey Elston is that he's a really good change of pace back. And the the fun thing to really think about, and I already have a headache for opposing defenses, which is fun, is think of a package where K State could have Dylan Edwards, Davon Rice, and Monterey Elston all on the field at the same time. I mean that that's where this is really trending towards of having that explosion, that explosiveness at running back in the backfield. And I think that it's a fun thing to really think about because all three of those guys can score every time they touch the ball. And the the other thing that I will say too about Elston and kind of what he brings to the table and you're, you're seeing a heavy dose of it on his highlights, is that he is also a very good receiver and can really track the ball down and can kind of play that slot role. And, I mean, we I've said his name like four times now, but he is kind of like that Dylan Edwards light where he can do a little bit of everything. Yeah, so this is, this is one of those for K-State where they have an idea, they know that they've been successful with players like this before, and maybe the fact that he is a guy that, isn't the number one running back on his team. Uh, you, you, I think that's one of the ways that you can kind of find ways to be successful in the margins as a staff recruiting in college football. Mm-hmm. If you don't have those resources where, hey, go find the really good teams and then see, okay, well, we know they're going to have depth. And Montario Elston, as we, we talked about, um, just four power four offers, and they're all you know from a fairly close vicinity to Little Rock. And uh, I think that's one of those deals where you're able to find some guys in K-State seems to come through here. So Montario Elston, in terms of what the overall expectation uh, might be for him once he gets to K-State, there's obviously going to be plenty of guys in front of him, so there's no real need to rush anything. But how would he uh, eventually fit into K-State's future plans? Yeah, so that's a tough thing because Dylan Edwards still has three years of eligibility. DJ Giddens still even has has one more if he wants to come back. I know that we've kind of said that we think that it's probably a little bit unlikely at this point that DJ Giddens returns. Joe Jackson still has four years of eligibility left. Davon Rice still has four years left. So it'll be a a tough it'll be tough for him to see the field probably right away. I think that the the time that he would probably get to see the field right away is special teams because he runs in the four fours and the forty. So I think that if he can kind of use that to his advantage and be that kick returner, punt returner, and especially because we've talked about how we think that Dylan Edwards will be the kick and punt returner this season. If DJ Gins doesn't return, you're probably, you probably don't want Dylan Edwards to also do kick and punt return while being a starting running back. So I think that's one where you could probably see Monterey Alston, but I, I think that his speed is going to get him on the field, but I don't know how much it will be early on because like the running back room at K-State right now is just so young and so talented. It might be a little bit tougher for him to see the field on offense. So it might come on special teams. Yeah. So there's, I mean, K-State is, is in a good spot right now, I think with running back in terms of the depth they've built up there. And certainly that can change rather quickly, but Montario Elston will play into it. And uh, this is a guy that the, the intention would be that you do something with him in the future. It's not just a, a number that they've added and we'll see what it looks like now moving forward for him. But the first running back of the class of 2025. Now in terms of how many they might add, we know there have been some other running backs at K-State shown interest in. Will this be a two running back class? I think that two is a possibility. I, I wonder now though, with losing DJ Duggar, losing river peppers, does the second running back become a transfer running back? Is it another high school one? Is it a Juco running back? I I kind of wonder if it will be somebody that has a little bit more experience because, and I think that if it is a more experienced guy, that's where you really kind of think to yourself that DJ Giddens is probably going to go pro uh, because I think that a, a transfer of some sort at running back makes sense if Giddens were to leave, but another high school one probably makes sense if he were to stay. So it's kind of one of those where, you kind of get to see a little bit of a peek behind the curtain of what's to come, depending on what happens with at running back the rest of the way. 
Yeah, that's that's a that's a good point, and we'll see uh, where they go. They certainly they don't have to force the issue, like you said. There's a lot of guys that have running back eligibility left, and uh, they can find some uh, help elsewhere. So that is uh, what you need to know on Ontario Elston, K State's running back edition in the class of 2025, as they continue to build out the offensive side of the ball with the three star running back from Little Rock. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. If you want more on the Elston commitment and everything else going down with K-State football recruiting, because it's going to continue to be a busy week, head over to On3, find K-State online. We'll keep you in the know there.